NFL line movement, Sam, the, the first one that I think is worth discussing, it's a quarterback move. There is some stuff involving this slate where we don't know what's going to happen, like Jordan Love, like a couple of other situations. But one thing we do know is that Joe Flacco is going to start on Sunday night at Minnesota for Anthony Richardson because Richardson was benched. The Colts make that announcement yesterday. I love betting on the Colts. They've been my team. Kind of helps that they're 7-1 against the spread. Best best uh, record against the number in the NFL. But, man, Sam, you go into the year, okay, this is a year of learning. Anthony Richardson, we didn't get to learn much. He only played a month in his rookie campaign. They go into it, and he's really struggled. And it feels like the breaking point for the Colts organization was him asking out of that game. Probably something we didn't talk enough about. So that happens. You've got people with massive platforms connected to the Colts, like Pat McAfee ripping him. And then they uh, decide to make that move. They go to the veteran Flacco. And the number comes down telling us, oh, the betting market is saying Flacco's better. They have a better chance to win with him under center. And I agree with that opinion. I do too, but I'll be betting Minnesota in the game. And I wonder if it keeps going down. Like, I don't feel this need to rush because I'm looking at the board right now. Minnesota minus five and a half at MGM, five at Circa, five at Pinnacle, open, you know, six and a half on the look ahead. So it's sort of running the other way. Um, I wonder, could I lay four with Minnesota? If that's the case, I would (laughs) – I would love to lay four. I mean, five is a dead number. Five and nine to me mean nothing in the NFL. So there's no need for me to lay five. I can wait and see if we get down to four. Minnesota's defense, very good. Minnesota also played last Thursday against a desperate Rams team in Los Angeles. So Minnesota's had the time to rest, recover, prepare for both quarterbacks. I think the Vikings are in a very good spot. Indianapolis also the best cover team in the NFL. They're due to not cover. They're due to have yeah. a come to Jesus game and lose by two touchdowns. Minnesota to me is in the most bettable spot maybe of the season because they've lost two in a row. They lost to the Lions, lost to the Rams. Now Minnesota's not that good. Minnesota's a little fraudulent. Sam Darnold isn't what we thought he was going to be. And Indianapolis is, I mean, kind of lucky to have covered last game right i mean they could have lost by 10 or more they they caught all the breaks they could have also went their way yeah but they i mean they should have lost to the dolphins two weeks ago and the dolphins started snoop huntley so i i know we can't we can't throw daggers at teams that survived and covered and won but i I don't think Indianapolis is that good of a football team. I just don't. I think Minnesota is decent. We've dropped the perception on Minnesota as a betting conglomerate. We've dropped it, I think, a little too much. I I think this game should be closer to seven. Like, true number. And you think back to last Thursday. We, We have to remember where we were. We didn't know that Puka was going to play in that game. That was a rough spot. It was a short week, road game spot. Now you're on everybody's radar. You're legit. The Vikings are legit. I thought that was g- going to be a rough spot for the Vikings, and it ended up being that. Um, so, yeah, maybe you buy the dip a little bit. If this is the dip two weeks ago, what's this number? Are we at seven when they're five or no? Maybe. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's yeah. at least six, six and a half. Yeah, for sure. But there's well, also that's... an appetite. There's an appetite to bet Minnesota. So if you open six, it goes to seven. Now there's an appetite to bet against Minnesota. So that's why it goes from six to five and a half to five. Most of the market is nine and a half on Denver, Baltimore. Curious about your thoughts. Pinnacle decided to go to 10. The Ravens are favored by 10 at home coming off the loss to Cleveland. And you've got a rookie quarterback going on the road and Bo Nix record wise. They've been terrific on the road this season. Shocking many. However, uh, the the caliber of team that they've been beating on the road is nothing like the Baltimore Ravens. Crazy to see a team 
laying 13 in week eight and catching almost 10 in week nine. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, right. We don't usually see that. Andy Molitor brought this up on our show Friday when we were in Chicago and the microphone plunging through my computer screen. Um, yeah. Plunged is the word I was trying to say. I think I just combined plunged and bludgeoned into plunged. But that's a crazy role reversal in one week, is it not? To go from minus 13 to plus nine and a half, 10? I don't remember the last time I saw that. It's it's a statement on how bad Carolina is more than anything, though. And the spot and being at home. Uh, yeah, it's just you have the by far the worst team, 32 of 32. And then you have one of the upper echelon teams, even though they started the season. You know, they've got three losses on the year, but power ratings wise, I think we're all smart enough to see that the Ravens are a true Super Bowl contender, even though they have three losses. Yes, they are. One other game that we need to talk about, the Cleveland hype is getting a little out of control. Yes, it is. Chargers at Cleveland. We love Cleveland. We were first on Team Cleveland and Jameis. Yep. Look ahead. Chargers minus four and a half at Cleveland. Chargers now under a field goal. Chargers minus two. You give Harbaugh all that time and all that tape on Jameis Winston. I don't think I would bet the Browns here. Definitely not at plus two. Nope. Don't do it. Public dog, right? They're going to be a public dog? Square dog. No doubt. Okay. The square dogs will be. See, Houston's going to be a public dog tomorrow for sure. Browns. I got square dogs. I got square dogs. Indianapolis, Cleveland, Chicago. Really? We'll see if they close there. Some places already have that as a pick them. It's not going to be Seattle. I know that with all the love. I don't think it's going to be Green Bay. People don't want to jump off that Lions train, even though maybe it should be Green Bay. It won't be Jacksonville. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Okay, one we didn't get to earlier, and it can fit the conversation of uh, live dogs, I think. It's kind of wild to see the Tennessee Titans favored by three and a half points against New England. I wouldn't bet that game with your money. Yeah. But just, I'm tempted to just take New England because the Tennessee Titans should not be favored by three and a half. But they I wrote put this that down earlier. Under. Yeah. Tennessee is one in six ATS and one in six straight up. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. I know they're bad.